Hi, it's Chester Togwa from Blue Pecan Computer Training. In this video, we're going to look at recording macros in Excel. Uh, the scenario is I've imported some data from another system about our product sales. And when I import the data, it doesn't come in in the right format. I need it to look like this. And when I have thousands and thousands of rows of data, it takes me absolutely ages to achieve this layout and this format. So I want a macro that will run for me and do all this reformatting and replacement of all the rows uh, for me. So um, to record a macro, you need to have the developer tab on your ribbon. And to view the developer tab, you just need to right click on an existing tab, go to customize the ribbon and just tick this little checkbox here against developer. Once you're in the developer tab, you can click on record macro and you can give the macro a name. So I'll call this import data format. I can give it a shortcut key. Let's say we have control shift O and I'll store it in this workbook uh, because really the macro is only relevant to this workbook. And you could put it in a description, but I don't need to. So I'm just going to click on OK. Now, when we record macros, we can record using relative references, or we can choose not to record with relative references. Now, the first part of the macro will need to delete these columns and format this row. But that's always going to be column B and column F. And it's always going to be row one. So I don't need to record using relative references. Relative references records your movement relative from your original position. Um, that's great later on when we want to perform the same set of actions on each product group. So rather than recording uh, the macro to always run in row two, we will record it for each of these sets of data, whatever row they appear in. So I'm going to delete column B and delete column E and then I'm going to format a row 1. Then I'm going to select A2. So I'm going to perform that set of actions whenever I import the data and then want to format it. From this point onwards we are going to use relative references because the next set of actions will be performed on each set of product data. Now the problem I have is, is that um, the product data, the products have a different set of variants. So this product has five variants, this product has two variants, this product has uh, six variants. So I'm never sure how many rows I should move down or copy the product code down into or whatever. So I'm going to have to use some special shortcut keys to move to the edge of the data region. So we'll come on to that in a moment. But the first thing to do is to copy the product code in the active cell. I then need to move across one column and down one row to select the first of the variants. I can then use a shortcut key, control down arrow key, to move to the edge of that data region. I then need to move one cell to the left and then select up to the product code. And to do that, I'm going to use Control Shift up arrow key. I can then paste Control V, paste in my product codes. I'm then going to move one cell to the right, Control up to move to the edge of the data region. And then I know that the row above that edge of that data region, I want to delete. I'm then going to go back to column B, first column, uh, first value in column B, move down to the edge of the data region again, however big that data region is, and then the two rows beneath the edge of that data region I want to delete. And then need to select the next product code, and then I'm ready to rerun that set of actions again. So I'm going to stop recording. Right, now as it is, that will only run that set of actions on the product code once. I'd have to uh, repeat it to run on all of the different product codes. So I'm going to actually have to write some code in my macro. So I'm going to move to the Visual Basic environment. 
and I'm going to make sure I'm picking out the one that we've just recorded. So that's actually in module three. So here we are, here's my import data format macro. And the first bit of the macro is where I delete columns B and E, and then I format A1 to E1. So that's going to be the same for uh, each imported piece of data. I then get down to this bit where I selected range A2, and then you remember from that point onwards, I moved to relative references. And this bit of this bit of code here, this chunk of code here, I need to repeat as long there, as there is a product code in column A. So I can write a little do while loop structure into my code. I can say do while active cell value dot value is not equal to empty and then loop this set of instructions again and again I'm just going to indent it don't need to do that but it just makes it easy to read do uh, repeat or loop through this set of instructions again and again and again until you find that your active cell is empty now let's see if this actually works so if you remember my shortcut key was control shift o i am going to create another copy of the original data and let's see if that works i'll delete that one so let's see if it works control shift o ah i get this little debug message so i'm going to click on debug i was feeling fairly confident but it hasn't worked and you can see that it gets to this point here and it's having a problem with it. Now, for some reason, uh, I can see that my active cell is B1. Now, I never actually selected B1 at that point in the macro recording. So this code has obviously gone a little bit askew here. It just shows that the recording macro, uh, macro recorder is not always uh, uh, totally reliable. Now, one way I can kind of analyze what has gone wrong is to step through the code. So what I'm going to do is actually delete that sheet and create another copy. And this time I'm going to step through the code. Now I'm going to split the screen. So I've got my spreadsheet on this side. And I've got my code on this side. Now I need to stop it or reset it because it still thinks it's halfway through running the previous macro. Now, if I go to this debug menu, I can see that there's a little shortcut key for stepping into the macro. This allows me to run the macro line by line through the code. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the F8 function key on my keyboard. Just to run through the macro, you can see that it's highlighting the line of code it's running in yellow. And over on the left, it's running through the macro on my worksheet. So that bit's fine. Select cell A2, and then this is the bit that's looping. So it moves down there, that's exactly what I did. I copied that up. And then, whoops, it moves up to that particular row. So that's wrong, that's not what I asked it to do at all. Now, obviously, your situation is going to be, your scenario is going to be different. I've worked out exactly what to do here. That Actually, this whole bit of code here, I don't need. I've tested it, and that's, I found, to be the solution. Obviously, your scenario is going to be entirely different. But it just shows you that sometimes you have to mess around with the code, uh, change it a little bit. You could normally get it to work with even a little bit of uh, VBA knowledge. So, let's see if I can get it to work now. So, I'm going to delete this. I'm going to copy, get a fresh, fresh copy of the data. And I'm going to do my Control shift o uh, I'm in break mode, so it's not going to run that. So, what I need to do is stop it. And I go back up here and I'm going to do my control shift O. And look, it's done it perfectly. Okay, so at the moment I have to remember control shift O as my shortcut key. 
another thing I could do is place uh, the uh, a little button on my quick access toolbar that would run the macro. So I'll delete this. I'll create another copy. And I'm going to go up here. I'm going to go to more commands. Macros here. Import data format. I'm going to carry that across. Go to modify. And I'm going to give it a pretty little button. It doesn't really matter what I choose. Let's go for that one. Right, so I click on that button. It runs the macro for me. Okay, so what have we learned? We've learned a little about a little bit about recorded macros, the difference between using relative references and absolute references within our recording. We've also learned that sometimes we have to edit our VBA code. Sometimes we have to add a little bit of a looping structure or maybe an if structure or something like that to our, our VBA code. And sometimes we have to fix what the recorded macro wrote for us because it's not completely reliable. Okay, it's been Chester Tugwell at Blue Pecan Computer Training. Hopefully this has been helpful. Thank you.